It is the Flow Friday Night Sports Show, Air Peninsula Cricket. We got some matches in across the weekend. Uh, well, mostly, anyway. Uh, only one association, I think, uh, just gave it away. They had other plans. Uh, a bit of crop they wanted to deal with, I think, at La Hunt. But uh, Paul Pierce joins me on the line. How are you, mate? Um, moist. Moist. Moist is the word. Always oh, one of the southern radio. Oh boy, gee whiz! Uh, the, this radio is just flicking off, and uh, <laughs> uh, direct, yeah, direct your inquiries up. to um, uh, Wayne at flowfm.com.au. <laughs> um, no, no, it's raining. That's what you meant. Yep, yeah, it was last week, and uh, still uh, came fine for a little bit, and then uh, came in wet again. So yeah. Not too many fabby farmers around the place. A few frustrated ones. Yeah, I think so too. But uh, it is what it is, unfortunately. Nothing we can do about Mother Nature. Um, did they get through in far west last week, though? Did they get some games? Yes. In? Yeah, that well. Uh, one game was played as though it uh, could have been raining at any minute, but the other one was a uh, standard length game. So, yeah, they got two games in up there. Excellent. All right. Well, that's where we'll start. Uh, who played who and who did what? So the first game we'll look at was uh, Sejuna versus Smoky Bay at Sejuna. Um, looks as though Sejuna probably won the toss there. They made six for 197. I was going to say Charlie Williams made 35, but there's a name that we you didn't want to mention again. Uh, he, who Cloden. Shall re- he who shall remain nameless. Yeah, unless we say Brendan Cloden. Um, <laughs> <laughs> made a magnificent 70 runs after I begged him to make some runs last week. So good on you, BK. Excellent stuff. Um, yeah, 697. Smoky Bay, uh, I think they lost quite a few early wickets and they made a bit of a fist at the end, but they ended up with 145. Rowan Chester, they ought to get a few to make 54. Charlie Williams backing up his form of the bat and bowling well again this week with four for 21. So he's having a ripper up there. He is. Uh, him and BK, I mean, BK's just getting uh, better and better with age with the bat. But uh, young Williams, he's going to have to be, I would have thought, a shoe in for EP selection, Piercy. Yeah, well, you put the pressure on the selectors there. He's been there before and uh, had a year off last year. But, uh, yeah, he's putting his hand up properly, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. Um, the other game? Yeah, Thevenard and Streaky Bay. Uh, Streaky Bay looks as though they might have won the toss and better first. Uh, <clears throat> all out for 52. Oh, boy. Um, yeah. Usually in those scores, um, extras is the uh, highest uh, scorer amongst them, but uh, there's only one bye. So all the ones coming off of the bat. Lockie Wilkins of Devon Mayor took four for 19. Nothing much to chat about with his streaky batting. No, definitely not. Uh, that's disciplined bowling. No trials to speak of. Uh, I imagine yeah. they got him quick. I imagine uh, they did. Uh, actually, well, streaky might have been a bit... Uh, I pulled out one stage, uh, Josh Redgold out on the first ball of their innings. Oh. Pretty golden smacker. Uh, but uh, they seven had lost four wickets, but they got there in the end, four for 54. Uh, young Lennel from uh, Streaky Bay taking three for 26. That would be Tobin Lennel, I reckon. And uh, That's the one. Well done. Thanks for that. A man with the golden arm. He, uh, he has got as strong an arm as I've seen from the boundary. Uh, boy, goodness. So he obviously can roll it over too. Yeah, I think he came on about six change or something like that. But he yeah, is still. I oh know he opened up. <laughs> he bowled pretty well. Got his nine overs in and uh, took three for twenty six. So well done. Um, while we're on far west, could we just uh, make mention about the two guys that uh, made the advertisers yes. country cricket legends? Yes, I think we need to. There's a few uh, few EP boys, but. Uh, Yes, uh, this was a great article, actually. I enjoyed the read, um, and there were a couple of Far West champs in this list. Absolutely. I know a few people would say, oh, what about this bloke, and what about Jason Regan, and what about those people, but uh, you've got to be nominated <laughs> no one, to win it. No one said that, Piercy. <laughs> <laughs> that's because no one nominated you, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, well done to Mark Treadgold and Brendan Cloden. A um, couple of absolute stalwarts up there, and, um, yeah, Far West wouldn't be Far West without those two. That is true. Uh, actually, your old mate um, uh, James there from Northern Areas asked me today why your name wasn't in there, and I said, "Well, they haven't named the umpires yet, so that's still coming." 
yeah, what goes around comes around. Yeah, no, I don't need anything like that. I'm <laughs> far from deserving like these other blokes are. Absolutely. Uh, no, yeah. It was a really good list, actually. I enjoyed that read. Um, for those that yeah. haven't seen it, we might get a link up on the Facebook page to it, but uh, it'll only work if you've got the uh, the paywall thing that I think the tyres do. But um, I, I don't know. I, we had a crack at Feats of the Week. I'm not game enough to go down that territory yet. I'll leave that to uh, the advertiser yeah. journos to, to mull over. Absolutely, and the good thing about those lists is they create discussion, don't they? Because everyone will say, oh, what about this bloke or that bloke, and he missed yeah. out. Well, yep, I think uh, every one of those guys that uh, was nominated and made the final 20 uh, was fully deserving of it all over the state. Yeah. All right, uh, that's Far West. We'll come back and preview matches uh, at the end for <coughs> all competitions. What now <coughs> we will do is move on to La Hunt, where they played no matches over the weekend at all. <laughs> no, no, no matches played at all. Um Probably could have played a game because there was no reaping going on. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, play on and look forward to this week's game. That was a harvest break without a harvest uh, last week there in La Hunt. So, I don't know what they were doing. Um, but, uh, anyway, uh, we moved to Eastern Air. And let's have a look at their matches from last week. Yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with it. I have to. Uh, oh, I was going to say it was your last, but you oh, can go first. I have to start with it. I've got to leave with it. It ties into that uh, little article that I was talking about, Feats of the Week. Number one on that list was... The most ridiculous bowling figures you will ever see. Uh, well, nearly. Uh, <laughs> one bloke got in the way of it. Buckle Boo yeah. took on Dark Peak. Tell us what happened. It was at Buckle Boo Park, so home deck for the Buckle Boo boys. Uh, Buckle Boo batted first. Uh, pretty reasonable score. Again, it's a pretty reasonable bowling attack, too. Five for 256. Um, runs shared around Zane Stutley, 73, and Burger Fitzgerald with 61. I reckon the Dark Peak boys were a bit fatigued after that, and it wasn't hot or anything, but Dark Peak came out to bat, all out for 40. Um, now, just before we get to the bowling figures, I just looked at the highest score was Extras with 16 out of those 40. Oh. <laughs> and the next highest off the bat was young Saxon Larwood, who's actually a Buckle Boo Junior and was filling in for Dark Peak for the day, and he made five. <laughs> well, look, I'm going to, for the Dark Peak crew out there who might not know this, uh, you would have if you read that article and saw uh, what we're going to talk about in the number one spot. Um, but don't feel bad. That is more than double the lowest score of the round. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah not too bad then. Ponder yeah, okay. in Murray Town's A2 cricket got rolled for 16. So don't feel too bad. Uh, there at the peak, you're okay. <laughs> it was one bloke who was the destroyer, and unfortunately for him, some other Muppet got in the way. That Muppet by the name of Jordan Sturley is feeling fairly guilty about uh, taking his one wicket for the day because oh, Jack Leanett. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jack Leanett. Uh, nine for 15. Eight of those were bold and one LBW, which uh, was obviously plum because it was a pretty good bat. So... Yeah, it's a pretty incredible figures, especially from a lad who's 16 years of age. That is extraordinary. This is a youngster. I, I had to go back and do some research because uh, I remember him going away in an under-14s team not that long ago. That was in 2019. He was playing under-14s, <laughs> and he's out there rolling out figures of 9 for 15 at 16 years of age. Give me a spell. He is having an absolute cracker of a year. Like it wasn't a one-off either. Like it, with the bat and the ball, he's uh, been fantastic for him all year um, against all opposition. So yeah, he's having a ripper. But yeah, nine for fifteen—that's something you'll never ever forget, isn't it? Well done, young man. Uh, that's outstanding figures. So um, yep, yeah, he's playing some pretty good cricket. He's been a pretty good cricket team, and Dark Peak will lick their wounds. I'm sure they had a froth at the end of that and went back home and. <laughs> thought about uh, maybe actually scoring some runs next week. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they'll work across that bridge when they come to it one day. But, yeah, they yeah. took a team to dismiss for 40. They had some good players amongst that. And, you know, they had a few young fillers and young fellas playing. But, yeah, there's a good head there. They'll be right. They'll come good yeah. eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, eventually. Uh, at Lock Oval, that's where we're going to head next. I'm liking the look of your boys, I've got to say. Um, yeah. Root Owl batted first, 156 competitive. You think you're in the game yeah. on a very big lock oval, but nowhere near enough. No, no, I went and had a look at this game. And young Jed Burton for Root Owl, he made 73 runs and looked um, absolutely brilliant. Um, batted really, really well. He's only a young fella too, about the same age. Yeah, 73. Uh, but then there's a bloke who's about uh, three times his age for a lock called Craig Weir that took oh. four for 24. 
<laughs> sending down some nudies again. So, yeah, where he's having a good year with the ball. Like in return, though, they came out and uh, it was a bit like people yelling out watching an episode of South Park because the two Timmies, Timmy Reynolds and Timmy Bowen, made 76 and 45 each and uh, got there pretty easy lock, but there were two wickets down, two for 162. So, yeah, another solid win for the boys. Yeah, it batted really well. That is a very good game uh, for the lock boys, and they're right up the... Uh uh, in the pole position area on the ladder. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Port Neal and Kimber. And speaking of uh, resurgent teams, Port Neal, um, they've done this uh, again. They uh, beat Kimber fairly easily. What were Kimber doing? Five for 117. What, they think it was a test match? Uh, <laughs> I was following this game on my cricket like everyone else does all day. Um, yeah, and it was pretty steady, wasn't it? Yeah, 117 after their 45 overs. Bailey Clements at 41. You're thinking, hey, oh, geez, obviously uh, someone forgot to mow the lawn down at uh, Port Neal or something's happened. Well, I've got to, <laughs> I've got to ask this question because I was having a look at the uh, the Kimber team sheet here, uh, the rundown, and uh, Haskett, all right? Have a look at this. 25 yep. from 115, and that's okay. He's obviously anchored the innings through. Very slow, but whatever, that's fine. <laughs> but he's out obstructed the field. Now, wh- this is a stitch up, surely. Uh, we were talking about this uh, in another competition where a gentleman uh, absolutely hit the cover off the ball to the keeper, walked, and his teammate put down, obstructed the field. What's going on? Is this some sort of TikTok thing that's going on in cricket circles at the moment? <laughs> My only thing I could come up with for that would be uh, the vagaries of people using my cricket and pressing the wrong button and then pressing another button after that <laughs> and not knowing how to fix up their little mistake. That's what, that's what I'm going to go with. That was in uh, Lower York Peninsula cricket that happened. And just uh, just quietly, uh, I don't know obstructed the field is correct, I would have said maybe obstructing his own team, uh, 25 for 115. <laughs> Give me a spell. Yeah, well, it's uh, every team needs one. And uh, <laughs> there's the Stonewaller, Kimber's very own. So. <laughs> no, well, yeah. yeah. So uh, 117 was nowhere near enough against this rather powerful Port Neal batting lineup. Uh, yeah, there's. Uh, Sorry, sorry, there's two in particular there. Tommy Davy and Kirk Llewellyn, 57 and 39, they're having rippers. And, uh, yeah, look out. If you can't get them out early, they're going to stick around for a while and really hurt you. Uh, if uh, Tommy Davy faces 50 balls, there's a fair chance he's saluted the crowd because uh, he wastes no time. Yeah, well, uh, he did. He faced more balls than he made runs, so maybe the grass was a bit longer for Neil. Um, yeah. <laughs> All of that, or he's just taking things a little easy like the Kimber team. Uh, well, they're going all right at the moment, Port Neil. Uh, we'll check the ladders and everything a little bit later on. But uh, for now, we will move on to Good Flinders, where uh, two 2020 games were played at Kapini. Let's go through them. Yeah, first one. Uh, here we go. Uh, now, this guy, we've been following um, young Tom Creddy all week. Yes. Uh, all year, sorry. And uh, everywhere he plays, they win. Cockalici, back at his home team <laughs> for a change. Four for 114. Uh, he only made a few runs, but Alex Glover made 48 for Cockalici. Uh, but they did it really easy against Kapini Mount Hope, who only made 79 in response. Right. Um, yeah. uh, young Matt Forster. I can say that because he's about three or four years older than me. It uh, took three for 16 for the Cockers. So they'll be cock a I think I said that last week as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with it. Oh, I see what you did there. Uh, I believe young uh, Cretina now has got the nickname of Clover. So um, <laughs> wherever. <laughs> and and uh, for yeah. a lad that age, four leaves is more than enough. But anyway. Um... Absolutely. And. <laughs> And if any good recruiters get hold of him now because he's a bit of a lucky charm, as they say. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> uh, the other game, the late, the late game. This might be our last show. The way I'm tracking. Uh, <laughs> Kaku Yolana. They did this. They uh, knocked the hillbillies off comfortably. Yeah, absolutely. They made three for 156. Uh, big Karen Hall was 68, and Xavier Watson 66 uh, for the Kaku Yolana boys and the old uh, hillbillies. Uh, yeah, all out. Oh, no, sorry, 9 for 77 in response. And our old mate, Ballbag, with 39 for the Hillbillies. Needed a bit of uh, help. Interesting, yeah, interestingly, Kaku Yolanda used all 10 of their fielders, apart from the wicketkeeper, to have a bit of a bowl. So everyone gets a go in that game. I thought it was a Colts game. Um, oh, good on them. That Pretty. beats playing going from fine leg to fine leg, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Mm. Everyone gets a go. That's the way it should be. Yep. All right, well, that's. Uh, 
That's a good effort. So now we're going to backtrack back and have a look at what's to come in every one of these competitions, round of matches, and we're going to pretend that there's no rain coming for the purpose of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's all pretend and hope have high hopes, but I've got uh, good news for the Eastern Air people oh. um, coming up this week. Okay, fingers crossed. But anyway. Yeah, we'll uh, get to them. Round five of matches, are we? Uh, no, no, sorry, round four. It's Sejuna Thevenart at Sejuna. Who wins that one? Well, match of the round, um, the two top teams here, Sejuna are looking pretty strong, though. Um, you can't go past them. They've got depth and uh, commitment amongst the whole team there. So um, yeah, Sejuna will do it pretty easy, I reckon. Mm, yep, uh, I think you're right. Uh, the Bears at home to Smoky Bay. Uh, Tobin Lennell, young fellow, uh, if he plays, strapping young chap he is, I reckon they might just win. Well, I'm going with Smokey Bay to do this one pretty comfortably myself. But, yeah, um, yeah we'll see how we go. The Smokey boys, uh, yeah, back me up on this one. Well, we'll see how we go. <laughs> Probably the first one we've disagreed on all season. But, yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure I'll be wrong. La Hunt. Now, I'm sure they're going to play this week, um, or probably not. But uh, who's supposed to be playing anyway? So this week, uh, it sees Western Districts host Wadiki Warrenboo up at Poochera. So game of the round again. <laughs> and um, <laughs> um, yeah, probably the way Wadiki Warrenboo are travelling, you'd probably back them because I don't think there'd be too many hitters going around down that way this weekend. I wouldn't um, think so. No, and uh, pretty good side. Up against Western Districts, who are not too bad either. But yeah, I think we'll stick with the Wadiki Boo boys. Yeah, well, uh, if Buff Marshall rolls his arm over, then uh, what a key Warren Boo by plenty. But uh, no, I should say that. <laughs> He's been Hello, playing Noel. some good cricket this year, Buff. Uh, if you're listening, mate, well done. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, chin up. <laughs> uh, yeah, Eastern Air this week. Um, unless things change in the next uh, few hours or whatever, they're scheduled for their harvest break. Ah, okay. So a week off, uh, probably as good a time as any to do it, realistically, but they won't be doing any harvesting. So, No, it's probably a few boats on the water or something like that going on, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. How, many, how many blokes can Fuzzle get in that boat of his? Uh... Yeah, it's a big boat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we'll see how they go. Anyway, so no cricket there for Eastern Air to worry about across the weekend to come. What about uh, in Good Flinders? How are they tracking Great this weekend? Great Flinders. This is the next round of the T20, so five rounds in the middle. Um, and this week it's at Cockalegi. So the first game is between Cockers and the Hillbillies of Yellow the Flat. Um, I reckon I'll be leaning Cockalegi's way there. Yeah, oh, I um, tend to yeah. agree. They, they've had a pretty good start to the year, Cockalici, but that's a good game of cricket, that one. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be a good one, a cracker game. And the second one will be a good one, too. It's between Kapini Mount Hope and Cummins. Um, yeah, like I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm liking Cummins, but they're not quite getting there. But uh, mm. if there's any week to have an upset, this is, the game, this is the game to do it against the top side. So, uh, But I'm still sticking with Kapini. Yeah. Um, I think you're right, and uh, just uh, that that one is those that round is scheduled for the 27th, folks. Just bear that in mind. But um, I don't know what they'll do there. I, I've seen this before. If if the weather conditions are okay to play and um, they can't harvest, I reckon they they might actually get that underway. Yeah, the, the, the chances. Well, I don't think it's going to happen, but yeah, the chances are Eastern Air may even do the same thing. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, Eastern Air don't tend to move around as much from their program. They have it as is, and that's it. But uh, stranger things have happened. But Great Flinders yeah. does quite a bit. It's sort of a floating harvest break, isn't it? Yep, and the flexibility is the key nowadays, isn't it? Like with uh, people struggling for numbers and things like that, if we can get a game together, a few phone calls, a few uh, messenger chat groups and whatever, and away we go. Yeah, that's it. So uh, I like this time of year because it's always a surprise when I ring you to find out who actually played and who didn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, look, we've, we, like I said to you the other day, we've got electricity and, and, and telephones and things out here now, so word, word does get around. <laughs> uh, it's a bit of a lottery, but uh, look, this time of year is always a bit of fun and good luck to everyone who's trying to get that crop off. Uh, that's the most important thing at the moment. And the cricket, of course, uh, that'll be even more important after Christmas. But for those to get to have a hit this weekend. Enjoy it. Anything else, Piercy, before we wrap it on up? We've got some rep stuff coming up soon, haven't we? Uh, junior carnivals are starting soonish, I think. Yeah, uh, 14s and 16s are travelling over to the big city or the Barossa or wherever they're playing this year. Yeah, so we'll have to find out. The teams have been named, so I'll find out a bit more from 
both concerned. We'll have a look at that uh, next week and in the ensuing weeks to come. And uh, there might be a Hendo match in the first week of December that's coming up that we can have a look at as well. I think Port Lincoln. Yeah, that's right. Uh, are they going to travel past uh, Widders Hill this this what this time around? Or? Yeah, they're, they're they're preparing their uh, rations and everything for the big journey. Uh, oh boy, up the road to coming. Yeah, it'll be yeah, it'll be fine for them. They'll they'll make it. <laughs> going to need a bigger water bag. Um, look yeah. forward to catching you next week, Piercy. If we let back on, uh, hopefully we are. We'll catch you then. Righto, mate. See you later.